It's the 2016 NHL Draft Lottery. The Toronto Maple Leafs were the worst team in the NHL and were looking towards getting themselves a shot at number one projected overall pick Austin Matthews, a guy who was a few days away from being eligible for the 2015 draft and a guy who many people believed would have been taken above Jack Eichel would he have been there, but alas he was going to be the guy to headline 2016's draft. Shortly behind them, they were the Edmonton Oilers and the Vancouver Canucks, two teams finishing second and third worst in the league. People were praying to goodness gracious that Edmonton wouldn't get a first overall pick again. And for Vancouver, people were kind of like, okay, this Canucks team was really not great, so if they get the first overall pick, okay, cool, they hadn't had first overall success ever, so why not get it with Matthews here, right? The team shortly behind them, it follows Columbus, Calgary, Winnipeg, etc. But then when we actually have the draft lottery, Toronto wins first overall because that's what people were expecting. They had the highest chance of winning first overall out of all the teams. Second overall does not go to Edmonton or Vancouver. In fact, it goes to Winnipeg, a team that had a 7.8% chance at winning bumps up to the second overall spot. And then you had the third overall pick, which was not given to Edmonton or Vancouver either. Instead, it was given to Columbus, who jump up from fourth to third. And now you have yourselves a situation that sees the Toronto Maple Leafs going first, the Winnipeg Jets going second, the Blue Jackets going third, the Oilers fourth, the Canucks fifth, Calgary sixth, etc. Then you had yourselves the projected draft rankings. Everybody kind of knew Austin Matthews would go first. Everybody kind of knew Patrick Laine would go second. The third overall pick had most people believing it would be Jesse Pogliarvi, and then Pierre-Luc Dubois was somewhere in that conversation after, alongside of Ole Olevi, Matthew Kachuk, Jacob Chitrin, and a few other guys too. Long story short though, we all know what happens. Matthews goes first to Toronto, Patrick Laine goes second to Winnipeg, Pierre-Luc Dubois goes third to Columbus, and Paul Uyarvi goes fourth to Edmonton. Let's not talk about what happens next, because what happens next brings pain to my soul. But our topic today is the Columbus Blue Jackets, and how Jarmo Kekalainen pretty much admitted that the trade yesterday that we saw with Pierre-Luc Dubois, Patrick Laine, yeah, that was the plan the entire time. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Jarmo Kekalainen is playing the long haul game where he did something in 2016 and in 2021, it's finally paying off. But what we had after the Patrick Laine Pierre Luc Dubois trade yesterday was an interview done with the Blue Jackets GM Kekalainen. Now, may I remind you, back at this 2016 NHL entry draft, the fact that Dubois even went third overall was huge. Nobody was expecting Dubois to go third, aside from the Blue Jackets coaching staff themselves. Kekalainen's a Finnish guy who does Finnish scouting, so would it not make the most sense in the world for this GM to acquire a nice young forward to add onto your roster to take the remaining available fantastic Finn, Jesse Pogliarvi, a guy with a very good power forward-like scoring presence at the World Juniors, and who was just looking to get better third overall where he was projected to go. Instead, Kekalainen strayed away from the face of common consensus, and he took Pierre-Luc Dubois instead. It was very surprising, but nonetheless, it was a deal that in the short term worked out very well. Pugliarvi didn't have success with the Oilers right away. In fact, he didn't really have too much success at all. He was just up and away, going to the AHL, going back over to Finland, not really doing his thing in the NHL. But the other guy that was on that World Junior squad that year, Patrick Laine, was so gosh darn good. A great goal scorer, projectable NHL qualities, he broke into the league right away and scored a boatload of goals with Winnipeg. And now this guy is a Blue Jacket. The Columbus guys traded over their third overall pick and a third round pick over to Winnipeg for that second overall guy and Jack Rosovic. Here's an article over on NHLTradeTalk.com. Talks about... Kekalainen and the overall situation with Patrick Laine, and he hints that his preference at the very beginning was to draft Patrick Laine. The headline kind of reads it all here. Blue Jackets GM Yarmo Kekalainen doesn't seem heartbroken over trading Pierre-Luc Dubois, and he hints that he wanted to draft Patrick Laine anyways. So, the article goes over here and it describes what happened at that 2016 draft, and it also describes what happened earlier with the actual trade. There also is a video linked, which is the actual interview itself, so I'll leave a link in the description to this article so you can go ahead and watch the interview yourself. But if we read this paragraph right here, 
it kind of reveals Jarmo Kekalainen's entire idea approaching that 2016 draft all those years ago when they selected Dubois over Pauli and behind Patrick Laine. When asked about acquiring Laine, the Blue Jackets GM said this was something he's wanted to do for some time, and back in 2016, he actually tried to move up to draft him. That particular draft saw Laine go number two and Dubois go number three, but Kekalainen noted that he would have given a lot to move up from third to second at that draft to draft Laine. However, it didn't work out, which is why they ended up staying there. That's why today, he was able to pull off the deal, more than four years after he actually wanted to do it initially. He said it wasn't bittersweet at all. He added, we're excited to have Patrick Laine join us, and there is a price to be paid for an elite player. So there you have it. Turns out Jarmo Kekalainen just kind of had a big brain moment in general, you know? It's honestly kind of funny how this works, where the second overall guy that you wanted to draft so badly at that 2016 draft, all of a sudden after a few years and some weird coaching decisions in front of him, wants a trade. Meanwhile, the guy you drafted right after him is in a situation himself where he just doesn't want to be a part of your hockey team either, and then you're able to make a trade getting the guy you wanted from the get-go. Okay. That's pretty weird, and I don't want to get anybody in the comments being all conspiracy in there. Oh, maybe Yarmo Kekalainen told Tortorella to give Dubois a hard time. Maybe that's why Dubois wanted out, because it was a 3D mastermind chess kind of plan to go out there because they knew Patrick Laine wouldn't be happy in Winnipeg to trade for the guy they wanted since the very beginning. I don't want to get anybody in this comment section going all conspiracy theory on me like that, but it is really, really weird just seeing the coincidence there. We always kind of knew there was a link between these two because they were drafted second and third overall at the draft, but just the weirdness of the situations, the duality here, the shared reflections between both of their organizations and their situations where they both won out at the same time and they then get traded. And you gotta ask yourself, man, it's like, okay, with hindsight, with all this stuff that we saw, with all the drama with Patrick Laine, etc., would it not have just been easier for the Winnipeg Jets in 2016 to have just drafted Dubois second instead and given Line to Columbus. And of course, that's not really how it goes because obviously nobody could have predicted this situation here in hindsight where both the guys wanted out at the same time. But Yarmo Kekalainen, man, coming out here and saying, yeah, it's not bittersweet at all that we traded Dubois. I've always wanted Line. I wanted this guy back at the 2016 draft, bro. Like, wow. If you're Pierre Luc Dubois, how does that feel, man? Like, of course, I think anybody out there who is at the 2016 draft, they'd probably make something similar in the comments to the media if it was Austin Matthews, for example. Okay, let's say, I don't know, uh, Winnipeg trades Lion A for Matthews, and then they're like, yeah, it's great. We wanted Matthews from the very beginning. Obviously, that makes sense, but still, just having that up in the air, you know, it's so strange. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's in this article, which is why I'm making a video about it, because it's just so weird to me. So I'll leave a link down in the description again. Check it out if you want to. But yeah, I think that kind of wraps everything up on this Patrick Line saga. It's just a matter of circumstance that the guy that Kekalainen wanted is now his after five long years, right? So if you're still here, tell me in the comments what you think about the situation. I hope you enjoyed this Vidisha Ash Rolls and I and I and bye.